Alright guys, BLM here, back with a new video. In this video, for my 100th video on the channel, I will be remaking the first video I ever made on the channel, and that is a guide to International Survivor. So for this video, we will be talking about the 18 English language seasons of International Survivor. Overall, there are seven seasons of Survivor South Africa, six seasons of Australian Survivor, two seasons of Survivor UK, two seasons of Survivor New Zealand, and one pan-regional season. The order that we'll be going through these is mostly chronological order of when the series started, with the main breaker of that rule being the Network 10 revival of Australian Survivor. Now, this video will obviously not include any major spoilers, though I will probably talk about some of my opinions on the seasons, along with mention some twists or format changes. So now, that out of the way, let's get started. So, we are starting off with Survivor UK. That was the first international series to begin. And we're starting off with Survivor UK Pulau Tiga, which aired one year after Survivor Borneo and tries to replicate Borneo for the UK audience, replicating the exact same format and is even filmed in the same location. The UK version of the show tries to have a documentary style of editing where confessionals aren't really utilized nearly as often as an older season of the US show and the host actually narrates and introduces some of the scenes. But a major difference between this and Borneo is the quality of its cast. I mean, this is a season filled with a slew of really forgettable and not super likable characters, but with that being said, I, I do think there is one player on this season that plays pretty innovatively, I mean, especially for the time, and to my knowledge, this is the first time in Survivor history that a GOAT is actively taken to the end. But overall, I don't particularly care for this season, and it's not a season that I would recommend unless you're a massive fan of the first couple seasons of Survivor, but even then, this season might be dry for your taste. But the very next year, despite season one being a ratings disappointment, we did get a season two of Survivor UK in Survivor UK Panama, and it sucks. Uh, in my opinion, it is the worst season of Survivor Ever, and it's not even close. I mean, they decided to radically change the format, reducing the cast to 12, merging at 8, and having the public cast a jury vote. Along with these changes also came a non-elimination episode, another really dull cast, and some really boring gameplay, and somehow an even slower pace than season one. I mean, I really don't recommend this season for anyone outside of completionists. I mean, it's really just a terrible season of reality television. And surprisingly, this was the last season of Survivor UK. Up to this point, there was a production company that did buy the rights to bring back Survivor UK in 2017, and there are some rumblings that the show could potentially return sometime soon, but as of right now, these are just rumors. So now we're done with Survivor UK, let's move on to the pre-Network 10 Australian Survivor seasons, which started with Australian Survivor 2002, which was made because of the success of the Australian Outback, and this season aired in Australia instead of Survivor Marquesas. And this season has a lot of the same issues as the UK season. It's a really dry and humorless cast, which might be the worst cast in the history of Survivor. I mean, it's definitely up there. The location of the season is really mundane as well, and didn't really feel very Survivory. I mean, the editing is really dry, the gameplay is very standard, the season actually plays out, I mean, really similarly to actually season one of Survivor UK. There is again one player that plays pretty hard, particularly towards the end of the game, probably playing the best game of Survivor up to this point in time, but Overall, the season was pretty boring and the audience thought so as well, where it got pretty poor ratings and was immediately cancelled. Like the UK seasons, this is not a season I would recommend. I mean, the only redeeming quality to this season is that one player that I mentioned, but considering it isn't even considered part of the Australian Survivor canon, this really isn't a season that you need to watch. But now we're moving on four years to 2006, where Seven Network found a loophole to bring back Australian Survivor by buying the rights to Celebrity Survivor. So we end up getting Australian Celebrity Survivor Vanuatu. And this is a pretty controversial season due to its abundance of twists the entire season. And that plays a major impact on how the season ends up and leads to, to be honest, a pretty underwhelming outcome. The season did also have a smaller cast of 12, but it was filled with some pretty big personalities. However, those personalities had no understanding of the game of Survivor, which is 
what you would expect from a celebrity cast, but the twists really just ruin the season. I mean, just in the first episode, we start off with two tribes that are split by gender with four men and five women for some reason. And then one person of the opposite gender joins the tribes like later into the episode. And then after the immunity challenge, the winner of the immunity challenge gets an army guy as a reward that actually joins the game as a player so weird like what is this and there's more stuff like this throughout the season it's really just a strange season of really weird twists and to be honest to talk about a lot of the issues i have with the season i would have to get into spoilers so i'm not going to mention it here but do not expect any integrity of the game or any strong gameplay from this season but if you like some really weird characters i, I would actually recommend maybe giving this one a shot Though it is a completely frustrating season from an actual survivor standpoint. But now let's talk about the only season I have not watched actually and that is Survivor Africa Panama which was a pan regional season with contestants from all over Africa and this was filmed actually back to back with the first season of Survivor South Africa which we will talk about next but I don't have much to say about this season. I mean there is no copy of it online like if there was I would have watched it. But from what I understand, format wise, it's another season with a pretty small cast of 12 and it doesn't seem to be that great of a season. It seems pretty straightforward. There is the format change at the final four where instead of having two vote outs to get to the final two, they have two challenges that determine the final two. And obviously that's not good, <laughs> but we'll talk about that a bit later as well. But again, this season is impossible to find, so I can't really talk about this one from personal experience. But now let's just move on to Survivor South Africa, which we're just going to talk about in one giant block here, even though there are gaps in between a lot of these seasons. We're going to start it off here with season one, Survivor South Africa, Panama, which is a very mixed bag of a season similar to that of Australian Celebrity Survivor, where again, we have a decent cast. There are a couple standout characters and we have a couple gamers. I mean, the gameplay in this season is pretty standard. I mean, most of the way through, there is one vote that is probably the craziest vote in International Survivor up to this point, but this season also suffers from terrible twists. I mean, there is Dead Man's Island, which is essentially a proto edge of extinction now the format change from survivor africa panama also applies here to survivor south africa panama where at the final four instead of being narrowed down to the final two by votes we have two challenges winner of the final four challenge is in the final two loser of the final four challenge is eliminated the other two members compete in another challenge winner of that challenge goes to final two loser of that challenge is eliminated I hate this format, it sucks, but that's the way they did it for some reason. But the combination of all these twists do leave a sour taste in my mouth. I mean, I did enjoy certain parts of this season. I mean, the tone of this season does remind me of a like mid-school season of Survivor, something like a Survivor Panama or a Fiji. So I do think if you like those seasons and don't care about the integrity of the game, I do think this is a season that you could try out and possibly enjoy. But if you're looking for solely just like game, not really the season for you. And the very next year, 2007, we got season two of Survivor South Africa with Survivor SA Malaysia. And it's more of the same from season one. Same editing style, same tone, similar style of casting. Though I will say I didn't connect to this cast nearly as much as season one's. I thought this cast was actually relatively unlikable. But overall though, it's just a pretty standard season of the show. I mean, there are less twists than the first season. I mean, outside of the final four challenge still being there. They did actually modify it to make it slightly better, where still the winner of the final four challenge goes to final two, loser gets eliminated. But instead, that winner of the final four challenge also acts as a winner of final three immunity, where they get the choice to vote out one of the remaining two. So that's slightly better, but still not great. Overall, though, I do find this season really forgettable. I mean, it is a pretty easy season to find, though. I mean, it is online. Like, it's on YouTube. The official Survivor YouTube channel has uploaded it, so maybe you can give it a shot just due to accessibility. It's really easy to find, but just remember, it's probably the worst season of Survivor South Africa, and overall, it's just not that great of a season. But after Malaysia, Survivor South Africa did go on hiatus, as it often does, only for it to come back three years later in 2010 as Survivor South Africa Santa Cara 
Carolina, which was pretty much a radically different show from the first couple seasons. We, we did get a new host in Nico Pinaggio, who is currently hosting the show to this day. And this was a celebrity season of Survivor. And along with that comes a lot of the same issues I had with Australian Celebrity Survivor. It had a very rough start, a lot of pointless twists. And to be honest, the entire pre-merge is pretty dry, even though the, I do think the cast here is pretty fun. However, unlike Australian Celebrity Survivor, I think the post-merge in this season is fantastic, largely due to one player in particular, and that player is probably one of the best international players ever. However, the rules for this season are surprisingly old school. I mean, despite this airing around the time of Heroes vs. Villains and there being idols on this season, the idols still followed Guatemala rules, and instead of having rocks as the tiebreaker, we were still using previous votes. Though that does bring an interesting wrinkle to the strategy of the game. So despite a slow pre-merge, this is probably the best season and we've talked about so far and if you do decide to watch some older seasons of international survivor this along with the next two seasons that we'll be talking about are ones i would definitely recommend now santa carolina was a big enough success for season four to be greenlit for the very next year in 2011 with survivor south africa maldives which was weirdly themed celebs versus plebs which also means celebrities versus normal people and also weirdly, instead of having those two groups being separated into two different tribes, they end up being mixed together by episode two, which probably does work out for the better for the sake of the season, but this is a bit of a different dynamic than what we're usually used to seeing on like US seasons of Survivor. But this is a season filled with twists. I mean, there were powers called the black and white calories that had a wrinkle to the game, not necessarily negatively, but black calorie had the power to add a vote to a person, the white calorie had the power to take away a vote from a person. So that's something. This was also the inclusion of the modern Hidden Immunity Idol, the first international season to have that. Cast was a mixed bag. I mean, there were a good chunk of forgettable early boots, but some of the characters that make it really far are the better characters of the season. But I will say that this season probably has the most gameplay of any season we've talked about so far with a bevy of blind sides. It's really just a consistently good season throughout. I mean, a pretty underrated season of Survivor, in my opinion, and definitely one I would recommend watching especially for fans of the middle school era of survivor which again this season very much feels like and again like season two of south africa it is a very easy season to find online it's also on the official youtube channel so maybe that's another reason for you to give it a shot now like after south africa malaysia the show was again put on hiatus after maldives only for it to come back another three years later with survivor south africa champions and for me this is a great season marred by some major issues and a big portion of that is the champions twist now the champions twist is where two sports champions joined the two tribes as non-players they would help them out in challenges and camp life and they did have a vote at the final tribal now the problem that i have with this is that they hogged up so much screen time and also put a lot more of the focus onto the challenges which i didn't particularly care for another problem that i had with this season was the fact that it was an expanded season having longer episodes, more episodes, and that caused the editing to be really unbalanced, really slow paced, and also to have some non-elimination episodes, which aren't great. But what makes this season great is that this was a cast of gamers. While there are your typical few of really forgettable people, there are some all-time great international survivor characters and players on this season that lead to this being one of the most insane end games in all of international survivor but again the integrity of the game is compromised through the champions being there and also some really faulty rules that did get rectified for future seasons but it does majorly affect this season but i still find this a pretty fantastic season of survivor and if you're willing to watch a slow paced season editing wise you will get some really fun gameplay and blind sides just like you would see from a season like a Kageon or David versus Goliath and this is another season that is pretty easy to find as well it again it's on YouTube so again this is a season I fully recommend but sadly after champions the show went on hiatus once again until four years later in 2018 where a new production team brought us Survivor South Africa Philippines which had the format editing and production value of a modern US season. But this season is insane. I mean, people have compared it to a Brant Steel and 
I have to say I agree. I mean, it has some of the craziest characters and funniest moments in any Survivor season you'll ever watch as the perfect mix of character moments and gameplay. And you get that right from the beginning with two near perfect opening episodes. And even when the gameplay does slow down at points, the season is really saved by its fantastic cast who continuously bring entertainment the entire way through. This is a fantastic season of Survivor and is, in my opinion, a much watched season for any Survivor fan. And I also feel like it's a good season to jump in on. There's nothing to really hold you back as it has no real connection to the previous five seasons of Survivor South Africa outside of the host. Nothing is ever mentioned. So I do feel like this is a good starting point. So there's no reason to not watch this season. And now Survivor South Africa Philippines was a pretty big success leading to another season in 2019 in Survivor South Africa Island of Secrets. And this really is a love it or hate it type of season. I personally love it. I mean, the season does become pretty much about one particular character by the time of the merge and I found that player to be fascinating to watch but I understand why many others didn't find it as interesting but this season does play out just like any other modern season of Survivor I mean the Island of Secrets is just a more generic version of Ghost Island the season is filled with advantages and idols but something that I do think Survivor South Africa does better than any other international version of the show and quite possibly even better than the US version of the show is tell a story and I think the story of this season while dark at points was really just a fantastic ride the entire way through and it's still a season that I would recommend kind of the people that can find some enjoyment in a season like a world's apart or Fiji I, I think this is kind of of a similar caliber to that and that is it for Survivor South Africa up to this point now season 8 is coming at some point we did get a confirmation that there was a renewal, though there was actually a scary period of a few months after season seven where the show was actually put on hiatus. But luckily we got through that and we are getting a season eight. But with all of Survivor South Africa out of the way, let's move on back to Australian Survivor, where we're going to be talking about the Network 10 seasons now, where in 2016, Network 10 decided to revive the show in a radically different format for the Australian audience, we got a bigger cast of 24 people and a much longer game of 55 days and in turn, a longer season of 26 episodes with multiple episodes airing a week. And this also led to there being multiple non-elimination episodes. And I know some people like this change. I know there's some people that transfer from US to Australian Survivor and then really enjoy the longer episodes and bigger amount of episodes. I personally never cared for it. I I just feel like it's there's just so much filler in this show, and that really adds to the massive pacing issues it has, and, and that really goes for every season of the Network 10 Australian Survivor seasons. But even though I don't like that aspect of the show, it's still well produced outside of that. However, this season in particular, Australian Survivor 2016, it's a season of two halves, where the pre-merge is one of the best I've ever seen. Plenty of blind sides, idle plays, great characters, but the post merge is a drag. And I have similar opinions of the cast as well, where there are some all time great characters on this cast, but there's also some complete duds, and some of those duds make it pretty far as well. I do find season one to be pretty tough to recommend as a season on its own because of that, but this is the first season of the Australian Survivor reboot, which we are getting an all star season. In February and people obviously coming back for that season from this season so for that reason along with the fact that this season gets spoiled in the opening of season two makes me still want to recommend it as I feel like you should watch all four seasons of Australian Survivor to get the full context of Australian Survivor leading up to all stars but as a season on its own it's kind of tough to recommend as a whole even though it definitely has its high points and now for 2017 where australian survivor came back and arguably had its best season ever i mean it largely just followed the same format as 2016 the cast definitely still had its duds but was overall much stronger in my opinion definitely had some all-time great characters as well and had some really savvy game players definitely more so than the previous season and as i said like last season parts of it dragged i feel like this season was a lot more consistent not perfect, there were still some dud episodes, but better. There are some really fun blind sides throughout the pre-merge, the early post-merge is fantastic, and the end game is pretty unpredictable. So it is a strong season that is harmed, in my opinion, by the format of Australian Survivor, 
And again, having non-elimination episodes, being repetitive, bloated, and also having uneven editing. But I would still definitely recommend this season. I mean, it does seem like a lot of people started with this season. And if you're okay with being spoiled on the winner of Australian Survivor 2016, I would say this is a pretty good place to start. And then the very next year, we got another season of Australian Survivor, though there was actually a bit of a scare. I mean, Australian Survivor 2017 didn't do the greatest ratings wise. So in 2018, they decided to try something new with Australian Survivor Champions versus Contenders, where one tribe comprised of champions, essentially either celebrities or people at the top of their field, while the contenders were just normal people. And I personally like this season a lot more than other people. I mean, I think a lot of people found this season to be disappointing after 2017. But I personally think this season has some of the best moments in the history of the show. I mean, the season did have a lot of focus on physical challenges, which I can do without, but they did actually reduce the day count to 50 days and also the episode count to 24, which, I mean, you would think would actually help with the edit, but it actually doesn't. It's pretty much the same thing, but it does reduce the number of non-elimination episodes. Now, even more so than previous seasons, though, this season's edit is even more uneven. I mean, where there are some really fun characters in this cast, but even some of them don't even get airtime. And a lot of the airtime, particularly in the early merge, only is shared around by like a couple people. And I think you could also say that this is another season of two halves where the first half is definitely much weaker than the second half. But if you can get through to the merge, this season is really strong from that point on. And also for Survivor US fans, Russell Hance is on this season. So that's something else you can get into with this, I guess. But this is a season that I personally like and would recommend, but it probably isn't the best starting point for International Survivor due to its mixed reception. And now we're back to 2019, where due to the success of Champions vs. Contenders, we got Champions vs. Contenders 2 <laughs> the very next year. And obviously people were worried about this season before it came out, but I, I do think it obviously worked out. This, along with Australian Survivor 2017, are looked at as the two best seasons of the show. I mean, the season does follow the same format as Champions vs. Contenders 1, format-wise, editing-wise, and uh, to be honest, I would even debate that this season's edit is the most uneven of the entire series, where we literally have like half of the cast thrown to the side to make the other half the cast one of the best group of characters in the show's history. And that group of characters is why people love this season, but I can't ignore that half of this cast is literally buried in the edit. But along with those great characters, there's also some really dynamic gameplay this season, some really big gamers, but it's not without its flaws. I mean, again, this season, like Australian Survivor 2017, does spoil the previous season, and it is actually a pretty big storyline, particularly at the beginning of the season. So, Again, you have to be okay with being spoiled on the previous season to watch this season. But again, this was a well-liked season of the show, one that is easy to get into as it is another pretty consistent season of the show. So because I can see this as being a decent spot to start watching the series, especially because it is the last season before Australian Survivor All-Stars, which is starting very soon. And thankfully for this season, this season had the highest ratings of any season of Australian Survivor so far. And because of that, we are also going to be getting another Australian Survivor season at the end of 2020 as well. So I guess you can also look forward to that. But now... We're going to talk about the final series we have to talk about. Going back to 2017, we're going to be talking about Survivor New Zealand. And right now, we're obviously talking about the first season, which is Survivor NZ Nicaragua, which is a rough season. I mean, most of these newer international Survivor seasons are pretty solid. Not flawless, but solid. But this is an exception. I mean, while the production value is certainly better than that of an older international season, its quality is probably around the same. For some reason, they decided to have no idols on this season. They had Redemption Island, and they also had a bevy of non-elimination episodes. I mean, this season is 20 episodes. Two of them aired a week, one of them having a vote out, and the other one having the Redemption Island match. That's just terrible. <laughs> Again, it's so bad. And because of that, this is a very bloated season. And to be honest, just straight up boring season. Which is a shame, as I feel like if it was edited properly, it could have been at least a mid-tier season of the show. But this terrible format and editing, along with a cast similar to that of an old-school season, makes Makes this season very tough to watch, especially for fans of the newer seasons of Survivor. And considering Survivor New Zealand is currently on hiatus, and 
this season had no effect on season two, I would say that really you should just skip this season unless you're a completionist. All right, now the final season we're going to be talking about is the final season of Survivor New Zealand up to this point, and that is Survivor NZ Thailand, which aired the very next year in 2018. And this was everything I wanted from season one. No non-elimination episodes, no redemption island, the inclusion of hidden immunity idols, a cast full of gamers, people who were willing to play the game. The season was made shorter, similar to that of a US season. Really, they fixed everything wrong with season one. Now, the episodes are still longer, leading to a bit of a slower paced episode, and the integrity of the game is compromised to a degree due to two people on the cast being friends from high school, and that was something that production didn't know about until they were actually out there. But this is a consistently solid season of Survivor with plenty of blind sides. It very much feels like a like late teen season of Survivor, something like a token cheens. And it's definitely one that I would recommend, kind of as a, a standalone season of the show. I mean, as I said, Survivor New Zealand is currently on a hiatus. And considering the host has retired from the entertainment industry, even if it were to return, it would probably be a reboot of the series anyway. I feel like this season can stand on its own as a very solid season of Survivor. So there you go. That is every English language international season of Survivor up to 2019. So for 2020, this is going to be a pretty big year for International Survivor. I mean, we do have two Australian seasons coming, one of them being Australian Survivor All-Stars, the other one just being a standard Australian Survivor season. We do also have Survivor South Africa Season 8 coming, and mixing that in with Survivor US with obviously the all-winner season, it's really just going to be a fantastic year for Survivor. But that's pretty much the video. As I mentioned, this is my 100th video on the channel. I was originally planning on making this for my one year anniversary of the channel video, but due to the start of Australian Survivor All-Stars, I decided to move it up. And also, I, I do have a pretty big video planned for the one year anniversary that will be coming out around mid-February, so look forward to that. But that's it for this video. This is my updated guide to International Survivor. Thank you for watching.